Hi, we are live. I just gotta do a little diddly daddly here on my technology. Hi to everybody who is here already. I'm gonna put this to public. Ooh. Hello to everybody who is tuning in live. Welcome to the live stream. We're going to get started. Usually in just a few minutes, I like to give people a little bit of time to hop on live if they're deciding to come on. So um, yeah, drop me a comment. Let me know how you're feeling, how you're doing today. We have a very sensitive topic that we're going to explore today. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of time for people to hop on and I will once again just ramble. I'll just ramble <laughs> nonsensically for a few minutes until we're ready to start and then I'll ramble about more helpful things <laughs> in a more organized fashion. Welcome to everyone that might be tuning in for the first time live. Welcome to Starseed Mission Support. Starseed Mission Support is um, our favorite time of the week. It's when we get to hang out and spend time with our Starseed family all over the world and we get to communicate about all sorts of very relevant things and information that we need to know um, to be optimal and empowered and whole on our um, journey on the earth so welcome i'm so excited that you are here tuning in live we usually get started in just a couple of minutes and uh yes the galactic shamanism mentorship is the same thing as the earth star academy except the earth star academy is going to have an even more expanded curriculum the reason for that was this year when i ran the galactic shamanism mentorship um it's such a wide spectrum of information that it was very hard for people to digest all of it in a short span of time and so i've decided to actually break things down um, even more so it's going to have a beginner intermediate and advanced level that's going to be self-paced um, because there's a lot of people that really want to get into um you know the more advanced energy work and ascension light body activation work but they feel intimidated because you know you start talking about dna and multi-dimensionality and in the beginning it could sound um kind of scary and so we're gonna have a beginner's level where we break down you know chakras and energy and meditation and all of that stuff um and i find that there's not like really great beginner level of school out there you know information's kind of watered down and so of course you know even the beginner level information is going to be preparing people for the more advanced teachings of the original um temple initiations and it's really going to be like a real a real life uh, mystery school and i know that that word gets tossed around a lot these days um but yeah as we get closer to the launch date i'll be sharing more transmissions about it and um, it's going to be really, really uh, interesting. I think a lot of the frequencies are going to be energies that we've been waiting for. You know, the really super interesting stuff that has to do with our real live DNA superpowers. And, you know, for, for today, we're just going to be communicating a little bit about um, sexual healing. And we're going to get started in just a couple minutes. Go and hit the like button and do the social media thing <laughs> and if you feel like you have someone in your life that can benefit from these trans <coughs> these transmissions where um it's just real life stuff you know <coughs> i'm just a real life person that is on this intense journey of being a intergalactic being on the earth and we happen to be completing like a 950 billion year experiment in the universe and that all sounds very interesting and intense and i i eat food and i go for walks and it's just nice sometimes to have a safe space to feel all the feels and talk about all the things and so i'm very excited for all of you to be here um And I was, in fact, crying um, 
maybe just about half an hour ago. It's kind of apparent. You can kind of see it. I'm a little bit um, bubbly in my face. And it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Um, we're going to go all in on the um, sexual healing topic today. So I'm going to click go live. I look sleepy. Oh my god. I would say the galactics are working me hard. Like never in my life have I found myself consistently, consistently up at like in the middle of the night, outside, in the middle of nowhere, like doing physical things on the earth. You know, it's like I, I normally work in bed. <laughs> you know and this this week they're like you you gotta go outside and like i you know they they worked they worked us hard this last weekend and it was great i mean i feel accomplished like we were able to do so many things and some things that you just have to do outside late at night because of the cosmic alignments and because when it's at nighttime the collective consciousness is quiet so you can like you know, do more work and feel this clear because everybody else is asleep. So there's some things that we do at night. Okay, I'm going to get started here. I'm going to click go live on Instagram. Boop. It says checking connection. So, well, welcome beautiful Darcy's. Welcome. I am live. Okay, I'm so excited to share about this very intimate topic today it's probably my favorite topic to talk about i mean i think is everybody's favorite topic to talk about sex right the world is obsessed with sex sex is everything literally and we are going to talk about specifically the different kinds of traumas that we experience um i think i just went live i'm gonna have to edit the title how did this even happen um it didn't let me put in a title okay well whatever <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to the live stream. Today we're talking about sexual trauma. It's going to be a very intimate conversation and I'm definitely going to be going about it from the perspective of my own personal experiences because I know that that can be the most relatable and especially I'm going to be sharing two specific stories um, of um, soul retrievals of when I had to just connect with a younger version of me that was frozen in time sometimes when it, we experience trauma then a part of our self can get frozen in time in the past and they can get stuck in the trauma right that's why even if we experience the trauma when we're eight years old we can still be repeating those traumatic patterns or have those imprints in our light body when we're 50 and we will continually create um, abandonment or traumatic experiences in our relationship because those patterns of trauma are still ingrained inside of our being because that part of us is frozen in time in the past due to the trauma and so when i'm talking about sexual trauma oftentimes people think well oh does that mean you know i have to have been physically molested by somebody or do i have to have experienced you know rape or any of those things and the second story I'm going to bring in here is really actually about pornography and how pornography opens our light body um, for interdimensional sexual abuse to occur and multidimensional soul level human trafficking that also occurs on the planet. And this is probably a way more widespread thing that happens. I mean, just about every human being that grows up in the false matrix experiences this on a certain level, right? Our creative energies being siphoned or trafficked or taken and this can happen in various different ways whether it's literally just our energy being siphoned or if parts of our awareness are literally being abducted into other dimensions for um, sexual abuse to occur and so all of those things are the different angles that we're going to explore today and i just want to create first of all um, a very safe space. So let's all just kind of rub our hands together over our heart. And we'll just pl place our hand over our heart here. And you want, maybe want to close your eyes. And we'll just spend a second connecting in with the divine love that's inside of our heart. This place where divinity and our ultimate connection to unified universal source consciousness 
connect and lives inside of our being. And then we'll also connect to our um, source light, to the universe, the unified universal creation or God. And then we'll connect also to each being's galactic angelic team, our guides, our support systems that work in alliance with the unified source organic living creation in alliance with divine love and each person's highest love and joy. As you feel that crystalline golden energy just kind of fill our space, we're connecting to each other and we're understanding that, you know, sometimes when we go in to talk about difficult things, it can seem scary. And so we want to approach everything in a very gentle and soft way, but also recognizing that when we're deeply connected to our sense of divinity inside, that even the most traumatic things don't seem so daunting and so overwhelming. So we really want to connect in with that sense of strength from our connection to divinity inside of our being. And so if you're feeling comfortable, I would love for um, you to just give me a simple emoji or a comment in the um, in the chat box if you have or you feel that you have experienced sexual trauma whether that be physical when you're young or energetic or vibrationally um, from you know media and um, maybe in the dream plane um, in whatever way that you feel um, disconnected or distorted or severed or pain um, in our sexual energy if you feel like you've experienced sexual trauma in some way, um, if you're feeling comfortable, go ahead and put an emoji in the chat box because, you know, this is really a rampant thing that we're talking about here. And we are definitely going to be talking about solutions today. I'm especially out to rescue those frozen inner children. Um, I know somebody's saying, you know, why keep reli reliving the trauma? Let it go. Well, we're not really trying to relive the trauma, but it's not even us that's reliving the trauma. Like our consciousness can say, well, I'm going to let it go. But there can be soul pieces or our energy that's literally frozen in time. And so unless we can unfreeze those sparks or quanta of our energy, um, those parts of ourself are actually the ones that are stuck in that time repeating the trauma. Okay. And so today we're really going to go from the perspective of the unfreezing of the inner children. Whew. And so somebody's saying, what if a child assaults you when they are also a child? Is that sexual assault? Absolutely. I would say that if your body experienced something that it feels was assault and that it feels was abuse, so for example, a lot of people think, oh, you know, I was at a party and I was drinking a lot and I was just not in the right frame of mind and my body, you know, ended up having sex and I consented because I was drunk and in that moment, I, um, um, I agreed. So technically it wasn't, right, right? But then we have to go from the angle of the body. If the body experienced it as assault or as abuse, then it's not so much about the person that did it, but just about, you know, releasing those energies from our body so we can feel free and whole. And so, you know, this is a great thing then. So if you didn't feel like you were assaulted, then that's the most important thing. For somebody else that experienced that same experience and they, if they did feel that it was assault, then, you know, that would be the truth for that person. It's never about the external or the person that did it or who did it. It's just about the experience that the inner child and the body had. And, you know, we're not really trying to blame. We're not trying to, to victimize. What we're trying to do is fully acknowledge everything that we are feeling inside of our body so we can begin to process through the feeling and so we can acquire and um, obtain the gifts from those experiences. And so... I want to in illustrate um, these um, concepts with stories. And so the first story that I want to tell is, um, I guess, the first experience of 
sexual assault, which for me personally in this lifetime occurred, I guess, when I was eight years old. And for, I guess I'm 27 now. So for 27 years, um, I actually had no memory of this occurring, right? And this is quite often. Um, oftentimes, you know, a lot of people who experience sexual abuse at a young age will actually forget or um, discard the memory to protect our consciousness from the experience of the trauma. And so despite not remembering, though, I've always had very um, strange responses to sexual energy. So, you know, disgust or fear or if I experience love, if somebody was expressing their love, like an intimate partner or a boyfriend, um, someone that really loved me if they were expressing their love in through the channel of sexual energy would make me very uncomfortable right um i also went through a phase of um, promiscuity when i was in high school and you know basically where i just completely numbed myself and disconnected from my body and um sometimes this is a learned behavior from you know having been groomed as a young person of acquiring love or acquiring safety um, through fawning or through offering of our sexual energy, okay? And so I noticed that I had these experiences um, that weren't normal. So if my, if my sexuality was totally healthy, there would be no shame, right? I would be totally excited and connected to my pleasure. I would feel... Um, basically connected to the sensations of my sexual organs, just like I, I can feel my face and my shoulders. I would feel a warmth emanating from my sexual organs into my body. And this is really how we're meant to exist, right? That's our source of energy. And so when we have a good connection with our own sexual energy, and thus a good connection with our creative powers and our sense of creativity in our, our life, we can feel feel this warmth emanating and it, it's not um, like in a certain way you can perceive it as sexual energy but in a different way you can just per perceive it as warmth or life force energy that is radiating and nourishing the body consistently all the time because that's what's happening right life force energy is flowing through is nourishing the body and this is uh, what a healthy experience of being connect connected to our sexual energy would be like so that's clearly not the experience <laughs> with most people, you know, whether of having just um, been role modeled perceptions of sexuality that were degraded, meaning, you know, it's raunchy, it's dirty, aggressive, it's a way to gain attention, it's a way to acquire love, right? These ways of perceiving sexuality that is like consistently being hammered into our minds through the media and through our culture or the more oppressive you know this is like the two spectrums of the imbalance the other side of this is oppression or in certain you know asian cultures and in, in certain european cultures it's just heavily suppressed where we perceive sexuality as just this um very shameful thing that we should never talk about and both of these things actually disconnect ourselves from our full connection um, our true inheritance of cosmic creation energy, life force energy that nourishes the body and lengthens and gives us longevity and even um, eternal life or immortality, right? Just being young and beautiful for a very, very long time. A lot of ancient Taoist practices talk about how we can lengthen our life by just simply understand how we can nourish our body with this energy. Um... And so I obviously noticed from, you know, when I started the self-healing work, which would be like four or five years ago, um, I noticed that I'm weird around sex. And that was the first thing that, you know, was a simple recognition. And that simple recognition is powerful because the recognition is the first step towards moving through your healing. And so this is really important, though, because for the most part, because our world is so full of stimulation, you can basically live forever without participating in any level of self-healing and i believe that that's why people stay so much asleep because 
you know, a traumatic civilization, a society that, you know, is based on trauma, based mind control, um, will create a civilization of people that are numbing their pain. And while people are numbing their pain, they're also numbing their sensations and their emotions and their feelings and their intuition. And so now we have an entire civilization of people who are um, suppressed and, and hardened and disconnected. And so the first step to un to breaking through all of that is by recognizing that, you know, um, so if I'm feeling any level of weirdness or disconnection from myself and my sexuality, then clearly there is a trauma or a distortion or something that's keeping that separation from happening. And that separation, whoo, let's just say that, you know, there's no such thing as like a bigger trauma or a smaller trauma to ourself. Yes, a lot of people experience horrendous things, but this is a way that sometimes we can dismiss our own pain and our own trauma by saying, well, you know, I, I haven't been sold for sex or I haven't been raped, you know, uh, you know, what's happened to me is, you know, not even that bad. And while that might comparatively be true, um, it's very important in our self-healing journey to fully validate our own experience and to fully feel and accept the things that we're feeling inside of our being. So if your body is saying, I am stuck or I'm not feeling good, or if your sexuality or if your inner children are, are scared of sex in some way, um, you know, don't compare your experience with other people and just give yourself the space to listen to yourself. Because I think that that was um, a big thing that I came up against. You know, I knew that nothing major happened to me when I was a child. And when I found out about, you know, the planetary sexual abuse and the human trafficking and all that stuff, I was like, wow, like some people have really gone through it. And so I kind of just, you know, didn't really believe myself. You know, I felt like these parts of me have always felt like something happened to us when we were young and they always felt like we were traumatized around the topic of sexuality somehow but my adult consciousness have dismissed myself by saying well you know I didn't experience something as bad as others and so because I, I dismissed myself for so long and I didn't believe myself my inner child stayed frozen <laughs> And, you know, that's really, we, we really don't want our inner children to be experiencing more trauma and more pain than they have to. <laughs> so, having felt like I have experienced sexual trauma, but not having the memories, I tried a bunch of different things like hypnosis and um, uh, therapy and something called IFS or internal family systems, which deals with the parts. But because I wasn't ready, because my consciousness wasn't ready to accept and perceive what had happened to me, none of those things worked. Um, what happened a few weeks ago was that this little eight-year-old, because I think that, you know, my consciousness had matured. I turned 27 or whatever. And I think my inner child felt that my human consciousness was finally mature enough and safe enough for her to communicate with. So this is about creating safe space inside of our own being, right? If we consistently criticize ourselves and we're not in a space of self-love with ourselves, and we say, well, you know, I'm never good enough. I'm not worthy of love. I need to keep working to get to get better. And, you know, and we don't just sit down to appreciate and truly really just create a space of love and nurturance around ourselves, not to like abuse ourselves. We talked a little bit about this in um, the last video about AI, um, because the AI creates this anti-self virus that has normalized us abusing ourselves, right? Consistently criticizing ourselves and being mean to ourselves is basically self-abuse. And think about, you know, how that agenda is propagated in our world so that people have low self-esteem and so we don't stand up and we don't claim our power so that we're subservient and we're just, um, it's easier to control beings that are not connected to their power and are, in fact, hating themselves, right? 
And so I've spent a long time cultivating this vibration of self-nurturance and creating safe space around myself. This became a project that I really devoted time to because I just realized that you know, I am a precious being and I'm, I'm saying this as a reflection. So when I'm saying I'm a precious being, I hope you're all repeating that in your mind about how you're a precious being, that we're all created literally perfect and beautiful as these little seeds of divinity, as these seeds of God. And we're just born worthy of all of the beautiful things that exist in the world and all of nature and all of the universe and all of the exhilarating and exquisite beauty of life that exists you are worthy of we are worthy of because it was created for us to experience now this is a very different perspective than what the false matrix perpetuates but this is what is the truth right we have a benevolent unified creation or god or universe and that's why we have abundance in nature we have you know just an abundance of delight and beauty in nature and so when I realize that I am a part of that beauty and that I'm a part of, you know, when I look at a squirrel, when I look at a bird and I say, oh, that's so precious and so beautiful. I turned that around and realized that I am that too, that I'm also that bird. And somewhere the universe is also looking at me in that same way. And I realized that my whole life I've treated myself like you know i'm imperfect or i needed to be fixed or i wasn't beautiful or i you know and, and this is just how the society kind of um forces us or in entrains us or mind controls us to abuse ourselves and so when we're in that vibration it's very hard for our inner children to feel safe even inside of our own body and i think that this is something i'm just going to pause at because i mean just creating that space now to reach and hug and hold all of our inner children that were born into this false matrix reality that is out for the innocence, is out to harm and destroy and control these beautiful, perfect parts of us. And in that recognition, you know, we're beginning to connect with, you know, how maybe these parts have even felt unsafe being inside of our body. And so this, I was driving in the car and this, you know, I had been I'm having issues, let's say, I mean, I have a very profound understanding of the mechanics of creation and how source energy and sexual energy flow through the physical body and all of that stuff. But when it came to like human relationships with physical sex for a very 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 long time i had a very hard time and even until a month ago um, when i met the love of my life it was amplified when i could feel that so much love was coming towards me through the channel of sexuality it was very triggering right it's like my my traumatized and distorted parts couldn't decipher or couldn't tell the difference between abuse and love because all it's experienced is distortion. And so finally when I was in the car, you know, I've had this problem for a long time. And finally this eight-year-old, I just hear her. I hear this young voice in my ear and she says, I'm ready to tell you what happened to us. And I was shocked because I, you know, was still feeling like nothing had happened to us. But at this point, you know, I had been doing this inner child work for long enough that I knew that what I needed to do as like a, as the adult in the system, as the adult inside of my body, what I needed to do was to slow down and create space around this child to really hear what she has to say to me because it's me. And I felt very honored and glad that this part of me finally felt safe enough inside of our system to approach me because, you know, she did say that she did not feel safe to tell me these things before because we would have dismissed her we would have not believed her right and so um what i do in that situation i told her you know we're in a car this is not the right environment it's not 
safe for us to go into this and I want to make sure that I create the right space for us for you to share these things with me and so a few days later we landed in an Airbnb and I was you know in a safe space inside of you know a room and we decided that it was time to communicate with her and um the what happened next really blew my mind because basically this little girl showed me the memories she showed me that she was the part of my being that held the memory of the trauma and so she had to disassociate herself and freeze herself so that the rest of the system would not remember how scary and painful that experience was right that seems to make sense right so our mind and our brain is so cool that when you experience trauma it can literally fragment and just put that whole experience in a box and put it away so to your conscious mind you just don't even remember anything about that time but there is a part of you the part of you that remembers that was fragmented or disassociated or severed from your core consciousness let me give a thumbs up if that makes sense um, and in extreme cases this becomes multiple personality disorder right a lot of people that ex experience extreme trauma um in their in their childhood you know in the case of human trafficking and and um familial sexual abuse um this can literally splinter um human consciousness to the point of this identity dissociative identity disorder but most people, I would say almost all people have a, a less <laughs> extreme version of that, right? We all have fragmentations in our being because ultimately we've all experienced very traumatic things. And in the second example I'm going to give you, I, I think that's going to um, really reflect that. Um, somebody asked if I work with clients with defragmentation. So defragmentation happens a lot in my sessions with clients, but that's not the main thing that I focus on. What I do is I just connect with the client and I say, you know, what's the highest priority thing? And we will just be guided by the body predominantly and the higher self um, and the inner children. And so sometimes, oftentimes, the defragmentation work comes up, but not always. And that's not, you know, the only thing that we focus on. Um, I not rocket science and everyone has parts is just about knowing how to identify them and so basically any um strange um pattern or um habit or energy in your system that's not like peace and love and feeling good and feeling loved any part that is feeling severed from those experiences of love are pieces that we can bring back in so i was very surprised that you know this eight this eight-year-old part um you know she told me that she was the part of our system that remembers the trauma and thus you know have been frozen and stuck in that experience for almost 20 years and that made me gulp. I felt very sad about that. But <laughs> she said that our system wasn't ready before that moment for us to um, really un release her from that burden. And so I asked her to show me all the memories. And of course, of that then it all made sense because when I went to boarding school, um, my teacher's husband actually eventually went to jail for assaulting the girls in my school and it was a girl in my dorm room that told her parents that eventually led to him going to jail and I actually knew all of that but my human brain was like well you know nothing happened to me right and so when my eight-year-old came through she showed me the experience and she showed me all the places in my physical body that remembers the feeling inside of my body when the um, assault was happening and this is very profound because I thought that my eight-year-old was going to just like, like be so broken about it. But as soon as, you know, I allowed her to tell me her whole story and allowed all the memories to come through. And, you know, this is also just that 
um, our system has been working on self-healing for a very long time so we kind of know what to do when these things come up and many years ago the galactics told me that i'm actually a self-healing guide that's my role here on the earth and so it makes sense that you know this is kind of um what i'm now sharing with you guys is that when because i have access this frequency of self-compassion and creating space and really creating that space of unconditional love inside of my own field my eight-year-old basically um was able to show me those memories and then my body just spontaneously began to release the all the places because she showed me all the places, right? And it feels like very specific feelings. And these are very subtle feelings, right? These are very subtle feelings that, and this is why meditation is a really vital component of self-healing because meditation brings us into a subtler realm of perceiving. And so for the most part, you know, our waking consciousness is very coarse. We're interfacing with, you know, coarse emotions and stories and experiences and stimulation. It's a very wide frequency. And, you know, when we want to tune into the more subtle energies, we literally need to like uh, switch the dial on our microscope in our perception. And so we begin to literally act and um, practice these technologies that we have inside of our body and when we're able to perceive subtle and subtler and subtler frequencies of energy um, this becomes very helpful because then we can really help ourselves we can feel begin to really parcel through the feelings inside of our body and so because this is something that i you know obviously have already have uh, practiced immediately feel into the body where these feelings were kept and these were very subtle feelings feelings like i could i could it's almost like my body remembers what the perpetrator was thinking and what the perpetrator was feeling and what the perpetrator was um basically like because he was feeling and, and thinking certain things and he was touching me that these energies were coming into my body and my body basically kept and stored those energies because when we were young we don't know how to process and release those energies so we suppress them right so these are very subtle energy the distortions and the trauma in our adult life and so this is why when somebody was saying you know oh we can just forget about it well it's not about our conscious mind deciding to forget about it it's really about our body's ability to actually fully release those frequencies and yes absolutely this is related to past life as well it's the same thing right it's just you know releasing energies from our different levels of our bodies if through death and rebirth, we have not fully processed some experiences of different traumas. You will feel you will feel that inside of your being. And um, I'll be saying that she's feeling anxiety listening to this. I'm so sorry that this is bringing up anxiety. Um, you know, if this conversation is bringing up anxiety, I feel like it that's wanting to release those energies, right? Um, so what i would do is breathe and try to get to the place where we are releasing those energies and of course you're always you know if you're not ready to go through that process right now you can just you know close off this video and come back to it later when you do feel perhaps ready to open up more of these cans of worms it's not an easy conversation right because uh, these are very uncomfortable feelings for us to feel so the extraordinary thing is once we um once our system was able to release the sensations of that abuse my eight-year-old put on a cape and was riding a dragon and she was to transmute planetary um, sexual abuse energy and support humanity in this healing because the thing is that because sexual energy and creation energy are one and the same when we have a 
civilization of people that have their creative abilities and their creativity and their freedom to create taken away from them this is most exemplified in societal um, sexual abuse or societal soul level abuse or societal you know creative um, energy body abuse it all comes down to the same you know bubble of things and this leads to somebody saying is there underlying mental health disorder causing abuse so this is an interdimensional conversation right unfortunately it wasn't random humans that just woke up one day and just decided to ritually abuse humans um in, in atrocious ways unfortunately this energy is interdimensional it's coming in through negative ets right and de demons um to me, demons are any um, po packet of consciousness that has disconnected or fallen from original source energy, which is love. Like if the universe is made of love and if the basis of all creation is love, how could there be people torturing children, right? How does that make any sense? Well, there exists these energies or these consciousness that has consciously and intentionally severed themselves from source from that love and thus now have now require a different food store a different food source and so you know in my quantum hypnosis um journeys i have seen that there was actually a reptilian sh ship above that private school and it was abducting the children in that school including myself and that energy was actually influencing this person who because their being was disassociated being disassociated like when you're super disassociated you become an open system for possession and influence and manipulation and so really that poor human being was responding to this vibration of abuse that was in the field and i hope that makes sense <laughs> okay and so the amazing thing is that then this eight-year-old, he was she's riding a dragon, she has a cape. She's like, we've just been waiting for you to be ready to see because we, you know, the little child, um, because that child part of me was so connected to the divine, is so um, God, <laughs> um, she was actually waiting for my adult consciousness to be ready to, per to, to perceive and receive what she already knew. And when we begin to unpack everything together, she showed me what um, um, she went into the heart. And she showed me that, you know, courage isn't about feeling fear and overcoming fear. She was showing me that basically courage is being so in unity with God that there is no fear because you're God. And you know that any that there's nothing more powerful than the divine, than, than God. And that when you are God, ultimately nothing can harm you. And so even though she had gone through these you know terrible things, and that was very really scary for her, um, when we were able to just clear these trauma frequencies that were frozen inside of our body, um, she took my hand and she was like, well, we're ready now to expand even further into the restoration of even more damaged consciousness that is um, existent in the collective field so who flash forward the second um, example of sexual abuse i wanted to talk about is when i was 11 years old i discovered pornography and for a very long time, and this pornography that I discovered when I was 11 was um, very violent. It was just very, you know, I would call it very like dark and even satanic. It was just like, I mean, I feel like most pornography is, but especially, you know, a lot of these, I, you know, the, I and mean, we won't go into it, but obviously for a long time, I disassociated that part of my being because I was really ashamed because, you know, my family are Chinese and they told me that you know we don't talk about sex sex is shameful my parents have never had a sex conversation with me and they never talk about it they don't even look at each other like in any way and so clearly there was an energy of shame around this topic in my family home and so this 11 year old part of me 
that I, I feel that human beings are naturally such like sensitive and joyful and experiential and central beings, right? So when you're coming into that age, um, I think that is totally normal for a young person to begin to explore the sensations that they have in their body. And because our school, edu our education system and our parents often just don't know how to have these conversations without shame and maybe even with a little bit of enlightened knowledge of how sexual energy nourishes our body, it's cosmic creation energy, how we can use that energy to heal and create joy and love and abundance in our life, right? So, you know, obviously this being, my being is very connected to sexuality and sexual energy um it's my i would say almost destiny to help humanity reconnect to our creative power which is all nestled in to our experience of our sexuality and our sexual energy and that is so divine there's literally nothing shameful or degraded about our body's ability to experience sex and creation whatsoever not only is it not shameful, it's brilliant and it should be exquisite. And so I, obviously my soul came into this life with all of these feelings and then my inner child experienced the indoctrination of my environment and my schooling. And so it was very confusing when my little 11 year old girl discovered this very abusive energy on the internet, you know, in the form of pornography. And so from a very young age then, these energies, you know, what is that thing called again where we like mirror, um, mirror, neurons? mirror neurons, where, you know, when you're young and you're learning, your brain is literally looking for things to emulate because that's how our brains learn. So that's how we learn to walk. That's how we learn to cook. That's how we learn to talk. And when the young person is watching TV or, you know, in the case when I discovered pornography, those patterns and expressions of sexuality is what my little being imprinted into her body. And so, because when I grew older, my soul and my adult consciousness was not congruent with our being, but then my subconscious and my inner child and my physical body had been imprinted by the distortion energy it created this conflict inside of my my body where then i felt like i couldn't actually authentically express myself and this is when women begin to fake orgasms right or just like pretend it feel feels good even though it doesn't or just act in ways in the sexual act that's quite like degrading or, or whatever it is um, and so basically these are patterns that were imprinted into our body and into our light body through the consumption, through the you know, incoming data of, you know, media and, um, you know, the internet and all that stuff. So that 11 year old was also frozen in that time period. And when I went to retrieve that 11 year old, this was actually a lot more difficult for my being the process because I found these portals that went up into the other realms and I recognized that my 11 year old actually was being groomed interdimensionally and was being abducted into these ships and basically trafficked as a interdimensional um, sex slave, right? Sexual slavery was trafficked for sexual abuse interdimensionally with beings. And it was the grooming, it was the portals of the pornography that opened that field that connected my being to those realms that allowed these beings to siphon and literally just, I mean, I can't really describe this, but I think that, you know, when I expanded out, I saw that this is quite a common experience. Okay. Whew. And so that was actually a more dif uh, difficult um experience to process because then i thought about my little brother who was on youtube all the time and i realized that there's very satanic videos that are floating around out there and you know this is really a um pandemic i mean it's really just like the most um 
pervasive distortion that we're experiencing on the planet, you know, as a humanity. Um, and so then this became a process of bringing energies back into my body and revoking contracts, um, revoking consent. You know, and consent is an interesting thing because when you're 11 and you find something on the internet and you consent by consuming the energy. So because, you know, that part of myself chose with <laughs> my 11-year-old free will to, to watch the video, the, this was automatic consent because I was just totally inappropriate for these things to exist to be found by young people um anyway um you know this just the act of opening so you know this this is the same with watching tv um tiktok youtube and my, my little brother has watched you know these super satanic cartoons like I think one's called like five, five nights at freddy's or something and it's got millions of views by kids under 10 years old and it's literally about satanic ritual abuse. Like I, I, I looked at the video and I was like, you know, at some um, warehouse, there's blood everywhere. There's like, you know, big fluffy animals that are alive. It's just extremely creepy. And those energies are giving interdimensional beings access to the consciousness of our children. And that is severely messed up. And many of us that, you know, did grow up with technology, and, and I see that um, Bella is saying, how can we reach deeper into that part of ourself? You know, this work is the work of the light warrior, right? This is really the stuff that we came to dispel on this planet. And, you know, there's other things, you know, that are happening, but I feel like for the most part, a lot of the new age community and the disclosure community just get so stuck on, you know, the elite and, you know, the underground military bases and like, yeah, all that is true. And all, all of humanity is being trafficked, you know, all of humanity, like our society is a prison. This is a greater issue than just, you know, because once we say, well, only those people are being abused. And we disconnect to the fact that we are also experiencing that on a subtle level, then we don't get to the place where we are actually reclaiming our power and doing these deep levels of self healing so we can get to a place where we liberate a planet. And it's very tricky because this is our creation energy, right? So for the most part, people wonder, well, oh, I work this matrix job. How do I go from that to create? creating my own life. Well, to create your life of your dreams, you need momentum, you need inertia. And if you're spending your whole life, you know, thinking about, you know, how do I make my next paycheck? Oh, I'm so tired, I just wanna watch Netflix. There's no momentum to project your creation energy in the direction that you want. And so in order for you to cultivate that, you need all of your creation energy. And here's where we run into the wall of recognizing that actually, well, while I'm sitting at my desk doing something that is just, you know, completely made up in an artificial reality, 80% of my life force energy is just going right up into a different dimension where it's being siphoned and used to create an artificial construct. And it's not comfortable to have these conversations whatsoever, right? This is like scary stuff where you realize, I mean, again, when humans experience scary things that we don't feel like we're ready to perceive, we will disassociate. So how many of you feel like, oh yeah, everything's normal, you know, everything feels great on the earth. My life feels great. Nothing feels awkward at all. Nothing feels disturbing about this world that we have, right? Nobody feels like that. <laughs> nobody, nobody that I know feels like there's nothing wrong with the world, right? Even my mom, she was like, yeah, of course I know there's something wrong with the world, but she's like, but I'm not gonna open my eyes to look at it, it's too scary, <laughs> right? Because when we actually, I mean, these are the vibrations that are around us all the time, this frequency of soul level abuse. And so because there's that little tingling sense of discomfort, 
we're like, okay, head down. Let's just go to the office and let's just eat our dinner. And let's just go to the park. Let's just watch Netflix. And then at some point, and oh, the, the, the thing that gets to me the most is that then, even though we're doing that, we're like, yeah, we're light warriors and we're going to save the world. And it's like, okay, if we're going to call ourselves a light warrior, how are we addressing these energies? How are we facing these fears? How are we creating space to really liberate our own creative energy so we can actually lead humanity through that process? Right? This is what we have to do because everybody wants to build a healing center everybody wants to build a sanctuary everybody wants to build a school well in order for you to do that you're going to need energy and in order for you to get your energy you need to reclaim that energy and take it back from the dimensions and the energies that have been siphoning that energy for many generations through the lineage through your childhood right And so the first thing, the first solution that we have to this is, of course, you know, cultivating that presence of knowingness that you are divine and beautiful and perfect. And once you really feel that and you feel it so deeply and you begin to expand that into your aura and you begin to hold that space for yourself, you're no longer, you will no longer accept the vibration of abuse in your field. And this is very important because if you're somebody that finds, you know, other people always bully you, always put you down, anytime you say something, they're like, they're like, oh, you know, that's not possible, you can't do that, or, you know, they just question you, or they're really critical of you, or they're really hard on you. Anytime you feel like other people are expressing themselves to you in a way that you're not feeling good about we're probably doing that to ourselves, right we're probably mean to ourselves or hypercritical and this is not your fault this is not your fault at all we grew up in a hyper abuse society abusive society that thrives on making us small and powerless making us feel like we're not good enough and imperfect and so once we begin to create that space around ourselves, we realize that there are inspirations or inclinations that we want to experience. And for all of you that are you know, interested in this, I have a video called Creation Sexuality from a few months back on the YouTube channel where I go through the process of reclaiming our light body and reclaiming our creation channels in our body so that we can have all the energy that we need to bust through the false matrix so waking up is a very sensitive experience for sensitive beings like human beings and you know I find that a lot of times the world and even because like uh, oftentimes in the new age and the disclosure community it because we're just coming out we're just coming out of the false matrix a lot of these patterns the of scariness and harshness are still ingrained in um thank you so much cassandra are still ingrained in that so you know that's when we find people just posting articles like you know these people are doing these things to kids and it's like um that's what creates that uh what is that called cognitive dissonance right because it's scary and it's just the vibration that is perpetuating um that fear and so how can we approach this we need to begin to create that sensitivity and that gentleness inside of our own field right and when we really cultivate Z, Tara says, I just feel like I'm forever damaged and I just want to just assure you that's absolutely not true. Um, Our bodies and our souls are so resilient. I mean, I've had so many past life um, memories of just the kinds of crap that we have gone through. 
right? I had a one recently where I was sexually assaulted um, in a past life. You know, this is like when the patriarchy was at an all-time high and we hunted witches and stuff. And I went to court and I told them this person, you know, assaulted me and then I ended up getting punished for being a witch. And I, I have a feeling that this happened, you know, I wasn't the only one that this happened to. And so it's kind of multi-tiered you know, abuse that we have experienced through the Kali Yuga. But, you know, our soul and the perfect part of our eternal core is eternal and eternally perfect, eternally divine. And that is just the, the deepest truth about you inside of your being. And so just know that. And the more that you connect to that, the more that you allow that energy to touch your heart and to pull that truth out of you, the easier it is for you to just override, right? Because our inner children, they will just cower and cry in pain if they feel like they are going to have to deal and face the pain all by themselves. And sometimes we just need to bring in the highest part of ourself, God, divinity, divine love, right? Connecting to the truth that, you know, you are infinitely worthy of that truth inside of you no matter what you have done no matter what has happened to you and so i just want to send you this strength right now trust me i've been there as well through this healing journey there's many months where i've just rolled around on the floor saying just take me now just kill me now because this is too much and it's okay. Sometimes we get to just roll around on the floor and have a fit because we're on a planet where negative ETs literally eat babies. Like that's like you get to roll around on the floor and have a tantrum if you want to. Right? You get to feel that way. And and then at some point you'll be ready to pull yourself back up and you'll remember the truth of what you are, of who you are. And then you take the next step. You take the next step of connecting to the truth of divine love that you are and you allow that power and that love to support you. <sighs> and so Bella says, we can see the actual trafficking of the children right in front of our eyes, missing by the thousands. And I th think that this is real really important to bring in just how is that not on the front page that's the real pandemic of course and you know <laughs> we know why right it's because you know the people that are doing that are the ones that are in control of the false matrix and they're the ones that are doing the worst of it and so and they own the media and so of course you know we're not talking about this and then the next question that we ask is how do we do anything about it and then that comes back to us healing the trafficking that is doing that's happening inside of our body inside of our energy body inside of our soul so that we are operating on our creator level you know like when we're flowing creation energy and we're creating an original alignment with universal creation template that these bodies are literally made to do again i highly recommend the creation sexuality video um cassandra posted a link on there um oh sorry i can't copy it but anyway because and, and you know it's kind of like this crazy thing that they will even use these things to distract us right in the false um in the new age community when the disclosure community when these waves happen it's interesting how it happens in waves right like all of a sudden it's happening all of a sudden is the meme and then nobody's talking about it it's crickets and then all of a sudden it's happening and everybody's talking about it. everybody's like all their panties are all in a knot and oh no these kids we gotta save the kids and then nothing and these waves are created are manipulated once we integrate the information, how are we living? How are we moving with the fact that these horrible things are happening in the world? And I am suggesting um, 
this is just, you know, what I think. Who cares about what I think? You know, if it resonates with you, then that's great. But if, you know, what I'm saying is, you know, not resonating, that's okay too. Um, how I operate with the awareness of this in my own life is I recognize that, okay, obviously I'm here to do something about it. And in order for me to do something about it, I'm going to have to operate in my highest when I'm whole and when all my soul pieces are in the field um I'm sorry oh somebody um Cassandra somebody is asking for the link on Facebook and I'm not sure I think they're tuning in from my um personal Facebook page if you wouldn't mind just posting the link on there too I would really appreciate that thank you um yeah i have seen what is possible when we are operating in our original creator template right when we have all of our energy and we have all of our soul pieces our light body is flowing right and there's no blocks in our field and right because it's like these vessels are literally designed to be inspired by something feel motivated by our sense of divine love and just give birth and create make it happen immediately now how many people experience um blocks in that process right it's like i want to do something but i don't have the money to do something about it i can't just create 500 rescue houses and hire military personnel to go and rescue the kids now if we were all millionaires we could do that right there's nothing in the reality that says we can't create the resources that we need to do whatever we want whatever we need to do when we have all of our energies and all of our soul intact we can create with so much ease and that's why it's so tricky because when they are constantly saying oh look at this terrible stuff that's happening and they don't you know give you anything they're like well it's you're powerless so we're just rubbing it in your face really <laughs> right so go hit up that creation sexuality video because that's kind of the next part of this conversation of really how can we reclaim our energy and this is interdimensional too right when we begin to create in these original creation templates meaning we're creating from a place of service and love and delight we're actually healing the universal body and that's a conversation for a whole different day um, But I feel like um, right now that this is really like one of those transforming trauma into soul power moments. And I think that's something that Kaya Ra talks a lot about. And Kaya Ra is somebody that is super inspiring to me because um, she was literally being sold in the elite trafficking rings when she was little for like you know, 10, 15, 20 years. I can't remember exactly how long, but she's like died 30 times. And then she completely healed herself by working with the energies of pure source and divinity. She specifically worked with, you know, the Divine Mothers, with Sophia at Consciousness Energy. And through that process, not only has she completely healed herself, she's created, you know, um, a system to help others and abundance to support these missions. And I think that Kaya Ra, let me see if I can do this, Kaya Ra, there you go. Whew. So anyway, my eight-year-old to this day is so excited because she knows that we went through these difficult experiences to have the geometry of the resonance of abuse in our body so we can support the planet in healing from that and i think that this is true for just about everyone that's tuning into this conversation who resonates with this word star seed
um, that you know you you also stepped into the false matrix and experienced the control system for yourself so you can actually you know have compassion and recognize and feel and really um, you know empathize with humanity of what they've experienced and there's no greater feeling of abuse than having I, mean, I think that the greatest level of abuse that can happen to a being is the taking away of the thing that's the most precious to them and I think that that is actually how I um, define rape right is the force forceful taking of something that is very precious and vulnerable and um, profound to a being and in the sense that we usually use it that's somebody's sexuality that is being taken by force but if we're taking humanity's soul power our connection to god our connection to our inner sense of divinity our connection to our ability to create now these things are what's the most intimate and profound to our human being and that is what's being forcibly taken and taken advantage of on this planet and so i feel this infinite well of compassion for humanity and from that angle there's really no room to be judgmental of you know the, sh the sheep who don't know you know it's like interdimensional planetary enslavement is no joke and we've all experienced it and fortunately for us the star seeds we have antiviral and galactic dna and galactic soul lineage that keeps and supports us and humanity a lot of humans did not have that they don't have that right and so we're actually here to hold that lantern for them we're not here to judge humanity we're not here to say well look at those stupid people they're taking the vaccine or whatever if we're on that boat of creating separation by consciousness then we've really fully fallen for the division um manipulation right if we're thinking well you know i i know all this stuff I'm awake or whatever, then again, we've fallen for the tricks, the manipulation of the, you know, of the false light, where they want us to not care about humanity, they want us to judge them and say, oh, look at those stupid people, you know, I, I'm going to do my own thing. Now, we've missed the point. Why do we come down here? Why do we? Because we love humanity. We love humanity. We love the earth. And we're here to hold this homing beacon, this frequency of divinity, of wholeness, of knowing our soul's power, of having healed and transformed through the greatest pain. To be a lantern, to be a lighthouse for humanity so that, that you know, humanity can move through that rite of initiation following our you know our footsteps so they wouldn't have to suffer and i think that that is very beautiful and so um, i love to live by the tenant that everything happens for us not to us because that gives us our power back and I hope that this video has been helpful. I think I'll be a little bit more grounded and I hope that this conversation wasn't too all over the place and I hope that it was helpful in some way. I'd love to get some feedback on that and I just love you guys so much. I'm really excited for this big adventure that we have. I mean, I have more stories to tell you about the journey that I've just been on but I think I'm gonna need to take some time um, to integrate before I um, begin to share more about those things and so I just want to say that I love you so much and yeah this information that wants to come through is really about um, the multi-dimensionality of this mission that we're on you know it's definitely not just in the physical world there are lots of things happening and um, very many other realms that are influencing what's happening here on the earth and more than anything you know um it's really beautiful to just gather and be together and i love you all so so much 
and um, we'll see you guys next week. Bye for now. And now.